All right, folks, we had a little venue change there. Uh, I was tired of the lighting, or I wasn't happy with the lighting there in the other room. So I brought her outside. So we got good lighting out here, and it's free. All right, so back. We're looking at the Padoza today, the Padoza number two, the Padoza two. As you can see, it does have, as I said before, stainless steel handles. Uh, they are brushed on this side with a nice little wave pattern put in there. I believe the coating on the other side is titanium nitride. I am not sure. I am positive, however, that the blade has a titanium nitride coating on it. Uh, as I said, the handle scales are a 2CR13 MOV, I believe. And maybe it was a 14, I'm not sure. And the blade is an 8CR14 MOV blade. Chinese steel. It is a high flat ground. It's a flat grind from here. It's not a full flat ground, so you can easily see. It does have a false sharpened swedge at the top, which would make it good for penetrating. It is one hand openable with that little eyelet there. Dude, however, to its size, it is a little more difficult than a larger knife, like a Spyderco or something. Uh, I have ordered the larger version of this, and that should be here eh, before too long. And I'll do a review on that one as well. But you can open this one-handed, which is nice. It is a frame lock, as I said, as you can see there. Uh, as I said, the uh, on CR, yeah, CRKT's website, they call this a, uh, a lo what is it? A locking liner. Uh, but it's not. It's definitely a frame lock. Take a look at it. Because it has no liners. Anywho, it's their website, their knife. They can call it whatever the heck they want, but that's what it really is. It does have a pocket clip. It is one position only pocket clip, but it's quite a nice pocket clip. Take a look at that. Very deep in the pocket. Pretty strong as well, but slimline. And as I was trying to show you before I decided to change venues, uh, it is thinner overall than the Buck Bantam. Uh, this is probably the only thing I have right here that would compare to it. Uh, I had in my possession not too long ago, Spyderco Bug. Uh, I would say the Spydercos are a little bit thinner. They're also full stainless steel. Um, as far as weight is concerned, this is heavier than the Buck. Because the Buck is, that's probably glass filled nylon. Um, but you get the extra strength of a full stainless steel construction out of this knife which is not unlike the Spyderco Bug series. And I can't remember if it's like the Spyderco Bug or the Honey Bee or what it compares to. I forget. I had them all here the other day. They weren't mine, but I had them here. I should have uh, compared them at that time, but oh well, I didn't. Anyway, uh, overall, this is listed on the CRKT website as a clo or overall length of 5.125 inches. Uh, and that's about right. It says close is three inches, but I think it's more like 2.999 inches. It's actually not quite three inches, whereas this one is. Uh, the blade length on it is 1.125 inches. We can check that now. Pull out the blade. What do they consider the blade? I consider the blade the sharpened portion myself, which would give us about a slightly under two inches now if they're considering the whole thing we have almost two and a half but let's say they're going from the tip to the back I don't know maybe when we open it up that's what they're calling yeah 2.25 once it's opened but that's not all that accurate because your actual blade that you can actually cut with you guys even see what the hell I'm doing here yeah your actual blade, so the sharpened portion, I'm going to say, is about two inches. Mm. Slightly under two inches. 
So you can see there. Compare that to the Buck Bantam. And why am I comparing it to the Buck Bantam Nano? Well, mainly because they're in about the same price range and the same size. And I would say same utility. But let's check out the size of the buck. Now remember, they both have three inch handles, although this one's actually a little bit longer than three inches. So we got about a two inch blade on that one. And on this one, cutting blade, about one, slightly over one and a half, not quite one and three quarters. I don't feel like doing fractions right now. So we'll call it, it's an eighth over one and a half. So this is definitely a shorter blade, has a shorter cutting surface. And we'll put them side by side. Side by side. Take a look at that. Look how much more blade you have with the CRKT. And I realize the buck blade starts before that, so let's put the side by side and you still got a longer knife here. Although closed, they are pretty much equal. The buck is shooting up over top of this one. We'll make that out on camera. It's a problem with this lighting is I can't see my screen because of the sunlight. So as far as size, you got a smaller overall knife here when it's closed, but a longer blade and a longer knife when it's open. And that's because you can see how the buck shuts and you have all this that's not used for blade. Whereas this one, when it shuts, your tip comes out a lot farther. Now, uh would be the theater of operations for this knife what would you use it for where would you use it how could you use it well kind of like this one i think you would definitely be able to use this inside a survival tin so if you need a small blade in a survival tin a lot of people use spider uh for that they are a bit more expensive this knife will run you between 7.99 and uh I don't know. I think it's listed at $19.99 on CRK's website. But if you go anywhere else besides CRKT's website, uh, you can get it from $7.99 to around, I don't know, like $12. This buck, I forget what it's listed on buck. Actually, I don't even know if this knife is listed on buck. Um, but you can get this between, let's say, $5 and $12. Um, I have not seen it for five in quite a long time and it was like $5.99 or something. That's when I picked it up. I got it on sale for $5.99. But it typically runs around the uh, seven, eight, nine, ten dollar range. <clears throat> but both of these being about three inches will fit in your little survival tin. Um, it'd be a nice little everyday carry non-threatening blade. So something that you want to carry to work and maybe you have a not so friendly work situation when it comes to the knives, you don't want to really be pulling out a big old four inch blade knife or even a three inch blade, you know, like an Endura would probably scare people. Um, but this is a very non-threatening knife, but actually very useful looking. So I'm going to test that out. Um, the advantages I have on this one over this one, number one, you got your solid steel construction. So to me, that just feels quality. I like that. Um, some of the things I complained about on this, or complain, I didn't really complain. It's much more difficult to one hand open, number one. Um, there's no jimping though. It does have a nice grip plan as far as how the fingers are in there. Um, it's not really one hand opening. There's no jimping, there's no pocket clip. Now you might not need a pocket clip for this type of knife, but if you're like me and have a bunch all the stuff I have in my pockets that you might have, you got coins, you got chapstick, you got you got all kinds of different things inside your pocket. Um, this thing tends to get lost inside my pocket, so I'm reaching for it and I'm fiddling it, can't find it. Uh, yeah, sure, I could put a lanyard or something on it, might make that easier. But I like the fact that this has a pocket clip and a very, very deep carry pocket clip. Take a look at that. So if I wanted to, I can just throw this right in my pocket 
on the my or right on my pocket in the pocket clip and it'd be easy for me to find easy for me to access um however some of you might not want to run it in your pocket but considering how thin this pocket clip is even next to the buck it's really not that much thicker if you just drop it in your pocket and if you really hate pocket clips you can take it off um, so I think there's an advantage on the size of it uh, you get a longer blade you get a shorter overall profile a thinner profile and you have a pocket clip you actually have jimping which is actually fairly functional jimping you can use that uh, the ergonomics are pretty good they might not be quite as good as this one with its nice little finger choils um, but it still has a bit of a finger choil there and it's still pretty comfortable the pocket clip you can feel it a bit on your back finger there's a little bit uncomfort there could be a little bit of uncomfortability there for you but it's really not that bad um, like I said you got a little bit of jimping you got the opening eyelet which is quite nice and you got this liner lock um, you got this I keep calling it a liner lock you got the frame lock on it which is a lot stronger than the bucks back lock mechanism um, I think I did an experiment with this earlier where I put some weights on it this thing held up to 32 pounds of hanging weight off the tip of it without the back lock failing so that's actually quite good for what it is it is pretty strong but it's never going to be as strong as this frame lock because that frame lock's just not going to fail unless you bend this out completely and it's not going to happen the way it's going to bend is in and you're still never going to close that on your finger um, so that's good it's a little more reliable locking system in my opinion now as far as steels this uh, i don't want this this is like a 44a or sorry 440a stainless steel blade um pretty much a cheap blade steel one of the cheapest blade steels you can buy uh it is good because you know it's a buck knife and buck does good things with 440a or 440c steel um but still i don't think it's up to the quality of the steel in this knife and for what you're paying for here you're paying for a bunch of plastic and a little bit of design in the handle and that's about it everything else about this is pretty plain the blade itself is pretty plain um not all that thick not as sturdy it the tip of it is nice and pointy but it's a quite a fragile tip because it gets so thin out there this one also has pretty pointy tip not quite as pointy but it's a lot more thickness there in the end so you have a bit of a sturdier tip on this um so as far as which knife i would choose i'd probably definitely go for the pedoza 2 not probably i would definitely go for the pedoza 2 over the buck bantam um, for the same prices and it's, i think i'd go with this over the spider co as well not think i know because the spider co's are slip joint knives they have no locking mechanism whatsoever so there's always that possibility of closing it on your finger um, the blade is longer uh, as far as weight goes with the spider coats they're about on par because the spider coats are all stainless steel construction as well um, now they do have even smaller spider coats something about that big which is going to give you a lot less weight and room but but when you how much can you do with a knife that big really this is probably about as small as knife as i'd want to carry in my survival tin um well, let's see how good is it is it sharp i don't know really haven't cut anything with it yet so let's get some paper and see how sharp it is initially